And today we want to deal with the issue of pride. Pride is a very dangerous thing. Uh, you may not know you have it. Sometimes until somebody else pointed it out. And we want to look at that this morning. Are you ready to hear the word of the Lord? I, we have to be excited about the word of God. Because the word is meant to help us become free. And when you hear it, you need to be open to receive it. So, Matateo, if you have my notes, Matateo is doing everything today. God bless this boy. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Matateo. Hallelujah. I can see his brother over here. We, we need to begin to work on this, brother. <laughs> Come on. Uh, you know, I do believe there are a lot of skills in him. Yeah, he loves the Lord. He, he actually got married here. Wh when was that? Was it in July 31st? His wife from Sierra Leone. How many of you know where that is? <laughs> it's West Africa. Yeah. Yeah, she loves the Lord. And I do believe God is going to do things through you, brother. God is going to do it. And uh, we, we are going to get everybody positioned for this city to see the hand of God coming. You heard about Apostle Catherine Creen Creek is coming. February, we have uh, Samuel Robinson is coming. And God is using that man. Even in one of his services, somebody died and was raised back to life. So they're all, I'm positioning these people so they can stir up not what we don't have. We already have it, but we just don't know we have it. Our faith will be increased so that the impossible becomes possible. How many of you like that? The impossible becomes possible. There are things in my life that I see that uh, it, it, it is impossible. This church was impossible. But we saw it far off before we get there. Right? How many of you want to see that the things that you see are far off, impossible, now you can walk into it and you can say, yes, I saw this before I got here. And so God is going to do, prepare. If you see these conferences coming, let me tell you, Wellsprings cannot afford to bring people like this. But God is providing. Can somebody say amen? And maybe God will challenge you and say you need to give a little bit so we can afford all the things we're going to do. Amen? There's going to be a ministry here. People are going to be healed. And there's going to be impartation. I'm telling you, there's going to be impartation. So you get prepared. But before they could get here, let me tell you, God can begin to do things. Even before they come, they're going to walk into it. And we want to deal with the issue of pride. Right? And that's why those, those kinds of things I said, you, do, you may not think you are a very proud person. But when you look into the mirror of the world, how many of you have been to the bathroom this morning? This is a place everybody goes, you know. <laughs> and then you see yourself in the mirror and said, oh, I need to fix this. Right? I need to comb my hair. I need to do this. Right? You see all those things. The word of God is a mirror, the Bible says. It reflects, it brings to you the things that you don't see. But if you don't go to the mirror, you will begin to think everything is fine. Right? And very soon pride will set in. I wanted us to turn, Matthew, if you can put it on the screen. We want to go to 2 Kings chapter 5. 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 1. I wanted to read this. Uh, we, we, it said, the king of Aram had great admiration for Naaman. The king of Aram is the king of Syria. He has great admiration for Naaman. There was a re there's a reason behind that. The commander of his army. Because through him, now this man is not even a Christian. The king of Syria, his commander, they are not Christians. But look at what the Bible said. The Lord, through him, the Lord has given him great what? Let's go to the next word. Has given him what? Great victories. Imagine this guy is not even a Christian. And God gave him 
victories. You know why? Those victories were given because the children of Israel have walked away from God. And God is now on the side of the enemy, using the enemy to discipline the children of Israel. It's amazing how I read that and I said, whoa. And you see, say, but though Naaman was a mighty warrior, he suffered from what? From leprosy. He suffered from leprosy. Now, you see this man, he, may, he won so many victories and pride has overwhelmed him. This man is full of pride. We can figure this later on. And at this time, Aram, the Arameans raided, raiders had invaded the land of Israel among the, and their captives and was a girl, young girl. So these people come, Naaman and all these people, they go and they raid the children of Israel and they took one girl as a slave. And among their captives was a young girl who had been given to Naaman's wife as a maid. Let's look at the next one. Verse 3. One day the girl said to her mistress, I wish my master would go to see the prophet in Samaria. He would heal him of his leprosy. Now this girl knew who prophet Elisha was. She knew the miracles. She is a believer, but she is a slave. And so Naaman told the king, what the young girl from Israel had said. Go and visit the prophet, the king of Aram told him, I will send a letter of introduction for you to take to the king of Israel. Now, instead of going to the prophet, they went to the king. Look, let's look at next verse. Started out crying, carrying, he's, he's carrying gifts with him, 750 pounds of silver, 150 pounds of gold, and 10 sets of clothing. You see, this man is coming with a mindset as though the prophet of Israel was a witch. You know, he ha you have to pay to get it. I mean, the things of God, are, he gives it free, right? And, and every time people want to buy something from God, you have to think, oh, no, no, no. You've probably watched all these, uh, some evangelists that are saying, you know, you, if you give this, you have to pay for this. I mean, this is God. This, you can't buy God's healing. It's free. Amen? But this man doesn't know. He doesn't know. He's just going from, oh, man, I'm going to give this guy the money he needs for healing me. Let's look at the next verse. Verse 7. When the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his clothes in dismay and said, Am I God that I can give life and take it away? Why is this? Next verse, why is this? Man asking me to heal someone with leprosy. I can see that he is just trying to pick a fight with me. Now, I, I actually respect what the king is saying here. He knew his limitations. He knew that's not within his realm as a king to be praying for people to be healed. And sometimes we need to need to know where, where what God, how, <laughs> whether we have the authority to deal with that. He knows he's just a king, but when it comes to things like this, God has His prophet, right? We remember in the Bible there was a, a king of Israel. I love, I, I like, I love this king. Who can you compare him to? You can compare this king to King Saul. See, King Saul, one day, there was a situation where Samuel the prophet was supposed to offer the sacrifices. But Samuel did not come in time. And what did Saul do? He did it himself. Because he said, hey, this guy is not, as soon as he finished, putting the things and start the, the sacrifices, then Samuel showed up. Samuel said, why have you done this? Sometimes we have to know our place where God has called us and we serve him within that realm of his call. 
where he has called us. Now you see here, this king said, why did he come to me? Am I God? Let's look at the next verse. But when Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his clothes in dismay, he sent this message to him. Why? Why are you now? See, Elisha is saying, why are you tearing your clothes? You should have sent him to me. See, now the fault of the king is he knew that was not his area to deal with healing and deliverance. But he also has a problem because he should have said, hey, I know, just like that little girl, that little girl that is a slave girl, knew where and who she should go to, right? And the king did not do that. Actually, the king probably had a problem with prophet Elisha. <laughs> he doesn't recognize him. But let me tell you, here it is. So, you so upset, sent Naaman to me, he said, and he will learn that there is a true prophet where? Here in Israel. My goodness, we can go to the city of Regina, wherever we meet people that are troubled, we'll tell them this. Eh? Come to Jesus and you will know that is a true living God. Hallelujah. We point people to Jesus. So here, Naaman was sent to prophet Elisha. Let's look at the next verse. But when Elisha, the man, what's going on? Verse 9, I think. Yeah. So Naaman went with his horses and chariots and waited at the door of Elisha's house. So he went there. But Elisha sent a messenger out to him with this message. See, Elisha didn't even go and meet who? Naaman. Now I wanted you to know, Naaman is full of pride. Naaman was highly respected in his country. He won so many victories. So Naaman was expecting to have a special treatment. And God is speaking to us. Do you have a place where you think you should be treated differently? Because you've acquired a lot of victories. Do you have, are you in a place where some people say you have a chip on your shoulder? So pride has set in. Naaman is coming with pride. And prophet Elisha knew that. And prophet Elisha said, I'm not even going to come and meet you. With all your gold, with all your silver, with all the position you have, I am not going to meet you. I will send a messenger to you. He didn't even see him. So Naaman, I think he was kind of, who is this guy that I come all the way there and he doesn't even meet me. I've, get, I've come right to his door and he sent somebody. Sometimes God will use things like that because he's checking our pride. And so here you see, but Elisha sent a messenger out with him with this message. Go and wash yourself seven times in the river Jordan. Then your skin will be restored and you will be healed of your leprosy. And, but Naaman became angry. Because Naaman is a star general. I mean, he has all kinds of victories. He is respected. The king there respects him. I thought he would certainly come and out to meet me and say, and he said, I expected him to wave his hand. That was what Naaman came. That's what he thought the God of Israel is going to do through the prophet. And sometimes we just put God, this is how he's going to do it. When he tells us to do it differently, then we're ticked off or we just don't want to do it. And it's all because of pride. It's because of pride. Let's look at uh, over the leprosy. And then he said, 
and call the name of the Lord and heal me. Verse, the next verse, verse 12. He say, and the rivers of Damascus. Oh, I don't want to be baptized in this water. It's dirty. You should go to the spa or maybe something like that. You know, we, we have, we, we, I'm, and the rivers of Damascus, the Abana and the, now it's not the water. You see, it's not the water. It is who said that it is going to happen. The power is not in the water. You can get, you can have bath, you can jump into the cleanest water and you will still remain in your leprosy. If God said the water in Damascus can do that, it, surely it can do. But now he's saying, this is where I want you to go. But this man has a lot of pride. He said, are there no water in Damascus that are better than the rivers of Israel? Why shouldn't I wash in them and be healed? The next verse, and be healed. So Naaman turned and went away in a rage. He went away in a rage. The next verse. Yeah, but his officers tried to reason with him. Thank God for people that are around you. Sometimes they can recognize the pride in you. People that can, you know, those officers, they, sometimes people that are powerful like that, you cannot tell them anything. Man. Yeah, you cannot, but those officers, thank God for them. With humility too, they came and said, <laughs> we, we know you're a general, you know. But you know what? So if the prophet had told you to do something very difficult, this is not difficult, getting in the water seven times. How difficult is that? But if he would have told you to do something even worse than that, you would still do it because it's for your own good. So these guys took the courage to speak to Naaman. He said, if they've told you to do something very difficult, wouldn't you have done it? So you should certainly obey him when he says simply, simply. It's very simple, God says. See, the things of God are not complicated. They're simple. But we want God who is very complicated. We want to complicate it. And then we think because it's so complicated, God will be in it. God does things very simple. He said, this is simple. Go and wash and be cured. And Naaman thought about it. You know, pride is a very dangerous thing. Naaman would have lost his healing just because he was too proud. And I do believe pride, we all struggle with it. Pride is the number one weapon that the enemy uses. And pride first was conceived in heaven when the devil became proud. He turned against God. That's how when pride came, he, the first time pride was in the, in the picture. The devil was too proud because he was a beautiful angel. God is giving him. And then he said, yeah. Now. In Isaiah 14, he said, I will raise my throne above the throne of the most high. I. And he became proud. He wanted to become more powerful than God. His plot was recognized and he was kicked out with a third of, his, of the angels down. So pride is a very, uh, it, it's, it's a demonic spirit. And God wants to deal with pride because I believe if there is any reason God cannot move in our church with power and authority and healing and deliverance is because of pride. And we want to destroy pride in the name of Jesus. We want to destroy pride. Hallelujah. Let's see what happens there. 
if we complete. So Naaman went down to the Jordan River and dipped himself seven times as the man of God had instructed him. And his skin became what? As healthy as the skin of a young child. Have you seen a baby when you touch their skin? It's like, <laughs> wow. Yeah, he was healed and leprosy. I had the opportunity in Bombay where we go, we took the church to uh, a slum place where it's a designated area for people that have leprosy. It's, it's so bad. They can't feel their nose. Their fingers can fall off. I mean, it's a very dangerous, very da and this is a star general in the army. But with all the victories he had, he has leprosy. This man coming with him. He is in a place that anybody would have said, Hey, if you want to throw me into a dirty water, if you want to do even something I don't like, do it. I just want to get better. Right? I mean, this is not like you're going to have a surgery at a hospital where they will cut you open and do surgery in your body. No, no. This is actually better, just getting in the water and getting out, and you will be healed. But pride can hinder us from receiving from God what God wanted to do. He may give you, a, God will give us a stupid idea. The Bible says <laughs> the foolishness of God is wiser than men's wisdom. That's why the rich young ruler who came to Jesus and he said, what must I do? Jesus said, have you kept the ten, ten Commandments? Of course he lied. He said, yes, to be born. Once you lie to Jesus, he will test you right there. In fact, Jesus asked him one question. Give up your wealth and follow God. Because one of the Ten Commandments is that you cannot serve God. Right? And idols, and money is idolatry. And that man walked away. He was tested. He was not willing to go, to let go because of pride. See, pride can hinder us from receiving the blessings of God. Let's look at the next one. Then Naaman and his entire party went back to find the man of God. Because you know what? He brought a lot of gold in. And they stood before him and Naaman said, Now, I know that there is no God. See, Naaman... Now, he said, now I know that there is no God in all the world except the God of Israel. Hallelujah. Let me tell you. Hallelujah. The city of Regina is going to know that there is no God in all the world except the God of Israel. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The God of Moses who is able to part the Red Sea. Uh, let me tell you, they're going to say the God of Brother Hater. You can be in that list. The, the God of Philip, Ponziano, David Ember. Why? Because you are the one who brought the message of deliverance. He is our God. Oh, hallelujah. It will be powerful that even the Muslims, the Hindus, the Buddhists, the atheists, all the people in the city of Regina and the nations of the world will say, you know, if you want to get better, the real God. That's why healing and the power of God moving is needed now more than even ever. Because we are not going to come with empty words. We are coming with the demonstration and the healing power of Jesus. But how can we get there? God wants us to humble ourselves. God will trust. Remember it said, humble yourself and the Lord will exalt you. When God exalts you, he empowers you. So that you can do all things in the name of Jesus. That means we need to humble ourselves. But when there is pride in the way, humility is far from it. And we cannot be able to walk in the anointing that God has for us. I wanted us to really 
look at this. The title of my message is actually, it says, Pride Comes Before a Wash. Now, there is a title that says, Pride Comes Before the Fall. But pride comes before a wash. God wants to wash us from the leprosy. See, there is a leprosy of pride that need to be washed away. Pride comes before a wash. Proverbs chapter 11 verse 2. When pride cometh, then cometh shame. Right? When pride cometh, then comes what? Shame. Pride leads to disgrace. But humility comes with wisdom. It's very powerful. We need to really deal with this issue of pride. It's the issue of pride. It's the issue of pride. If we, if you have come to a place where Naaman was, my goodness, you don't care what people say about you. You just want to be free. Hallelujah. Pride, pride goes before the fall. That's in Proverbs 16 verse 18. It goes before the fall. You see, pride is always trying to Bring us down. It's always waiting for us to fall. Proverbs 29, 23. A man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. Hallelujah. If we humble ourselves, God will exalt us. Can somebody say amen? Proverbs chapter 88, verse 13. You know, if you read the book of Proverbs, you will really begin to see things in the mirror of God's word about you. Proverbs is a very powerful book to read. Just read it. You will see things about you that you don't see easily. That you may think, you know, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with you. You see, that's not humility. God will show us the things that are wrong. With. The fear of the Lord is to head what? Evil is to hate it. Pride and arrogancy and the evil way and the, for, the, the what? The forward mouth do I hate. You know, it, it, they all, these are things that we need to deal with, especially during this season that we're getting, preparing ourselves for fasting. We are preparing ourselves so that God will visit our church in a mighty power. I need a miracle from God. I need a miracle. How many of you are like Pastor David? I need God to move in power. I want to see it. And I want to see it in the congregation, in the members of our church, as if it is just it is a normal thing for any Christian. We can hear testimonies of people getting healed and delivered because somebody goes to Wellsprings Victory Church, prayed for them. Not Pastor David, all of us. We want to see that power. That's what the Bible teaches. Let me tell you, the message of the cross will move. The gospel will be unhindered. God said these signs will follow us. Right? But what is it? Maybe we're too proud. I just feel, Lord, I want to humble myself. I want to, and one way we can humble ourselves, let me tell you, you become humble really fast if you fast. If you fast, fasting will humble you quickly. <laughs> than anything I've ever seen. It is. When you fast, you become weak. And in that weakness, because you are saying, Lord, let me be weak. Let you be strong. Let me be weak. You will be strong. So when you humble yourself to spend a time with God, but you know what pride is? Oh, you don't have to do that. We are in the New Testament now. Fasting is in the Old Testament. That's super spiritual, Pastor David. 
we can find reasons, just like Naaman found all the reasons not to do what God said. We, you want to go and tell God. Imagine he's telling God we have better water there. No, I want you to get in this water. No, not this one. That one. Pride comes in when you have all the answers other than what God has said to you. When you're questioning, I don't know where people get this thing where you have to question God. When I went to Bible school, there was one day we had a, a teaching. Cr critically analyzed the gospel of Luke. I said, I don't like that word critical. So you take the gospel of Luke and you study and you critically analyze. I said, I don't like that. You see, we take the way of people study books in the world and we bring it and we want to study the word of God the same way. It means you question it. Sometimes too much of questioning of the things of God, you become critical. Why, why can't we do it this way? No, just do it. The Lord says it. I believe it. And I said also, let's just do it. Just do it. God said it is good. I can dunk myself. You know, it's even less. <laughs> dunk yourself in there. If he says that what you have to do. Right? If that's what he said you have to do. Remember in the gospel, I think it's in John chapter 9. I don't know if I put it in my notes there. It's one of the readings I was doing there. John chapter 9. And Jesus healed a man who was blind from birth. He was blind from birth. He never saw anything in his life. And Jesus went to him and Jesus took his spit on the ground. Jesus spit on the ground. Let me tell you, even that, pride can come in. Now, I'm not saying Jesus is going to spit on anybody's face. Or Pastor David spit on your face. Far be it from that. I'm not Jesus. You might as well just allow Jesus to spit on your face and and that's probably a blessing. <laughs> Not Pastor David. But that's what Jesus did. He spit and he took the spit and he mixed the dirt on the floor and he created the mud and he rubbed on the guy's eye. Some people say, ah, I don't want that. But let me tell you, that guy tell us. And he said, what do you see? He said, I see some things like trees. For the first time he saw, Jesus did it again and told him, now go and wash your eyes in there and go to the priest and show them that you're clean. Now, Jesus said that. What did he do? He went and did everything just like Jesus said. And he was healed. And it was on a Sabbath. Oh, the Pharisees were mad. How can you heal on a Sabbath? And they took this man to their parents. Please discipline him. The guy is 38 years old. The parents said, well, this man is of age. He can speak for himself. And they begin to confront him. That don't say Jesus, just give glory to God. He said, yeah, whether it was Jesus, all what I know is I'm healed. And they tried to investigate him further. He said, why are you guys so uptight? And investing Jesus' miracle. Do you also want to become his disciple? They say, no, we don't want to. I love, I love reading that story. But that man, that miracle was powerful. But pride. You know, that man would have said, I don't want nobody spitting on my, you know, I, <laughs> this is, no, but hey. That, now, I'm not saying we're going to spit on anybody now. I'm just saying that's what was he was told. And he was not proud. He humbled himself, and it was done to him, just like Jesus did. So what pride do you have? We need to, there's going to be a lot of things that are going to happen in our church. Some of them, you may not like it. Some of them may come against your religious spirit that you just want everything to, to be, you know, do you know that there was a time that 
brother Tosti playing drums like this, people would have left the church. There was one church in India that when I went there, before I got there, the pastor told us that half of the people left because electric guitar was put in the church. People left the church. Pride. That's not how I wanted it. But what if it is what God wanted? Are you willing to say, I'm out of the way? Not my will, but your will be done. We can see even in the Christmas story, Mary, the mother of Jesus, she was humble. She was the most humble woman at that time. That's why God picked her. She was so humble. Let me tell you, for somebody to come to you, you are just about to get married. Mary and Joseph were going to get married. They were engaged in a very strict culture. I'm sure Joseph did not mess up with Mary. That's what she was a virgin. Oh, yeah. And in that time, that culture was so strict. They have to wait until the day of their wedding for them to come together. And then the angel come and say, you're going to have a baby. You know, Mary would have said, no way, angel. I, you can pick somebody else. We are getting married. I know my husband, Joseph, is not going to accept this message. And I could be stoned. Nobody has ever had a child without a man. How am I going to explain that? But she swallowed her pride and she humbled herself and said, let it be done to me according to your word. And then she went and faced Joseph and Joseph said, huh? Are you crazy? You're lying to me. You probably went with somebody else. That's why how you got pregnant and you're bringing God into the picture. Joseph, being a righteous man, decided to quietly let her go. So at least she will not be stoned. She, Joseph doesn't want Mary to be stoned because it will not be right before God. And then the angel came to Joseph and told him, don't let her go. It's true. But the pride issue was right there. Mary humbled herself. She said, let it be done to me according to your word. It looks foolish for me to go and tell all the women in all my friends that I am pregnant because of the Holy Spirit. Nobody's ever heard that. Let me tell you, God is going to come to you with something that probably nobody's heard, but your pride. Or maybe you are not comfortable with, because what are people going to say? What are go people going to say? While I'm walking the street and God tells me to pray for that person or to cast the devil out of that person. Apostle Catherine Creek does that in public like Victoria Park. And all the people that are coming actually are seeing what other churches do in their churches. In a close wall, she does it in public. 25 feet away, devils are getting and all the bystanders begin to see. Let me tell you, now, I was listening to her. She was talking this morning about fasting and prayer. I said, amen. Amen. Now, most people would want to have that same anointing that she has, but they don't want to pay the price of humility. She said, very humble. I've never seen people that are used by God that never obeyed God in that area of fasting and spending time with God. I've never, everywhere I hear, T.B. Joshua, Ooh. all kinds of men of God that are used by God, they go to that area. They, they believe in that. And let me encourage you, we're going to do it. Our church is known for that. But I feel that we somehow, we, you don't need everybody. I actually come to a place 
I was talking to a brother Ponzi. He said, no, you don't need everybody. You need people that are willing. People that want to. Because we have to be in agreement. Sometimes these things can be as a result of few people that commit themselves to it. And we can see the breakthrough come to our church. Can somebody say amen? We want to see that. I really believe. You see, pride also. Um, I wanted us to look at the rest we can continue later. Uh, Romans chapter 12, verse 16. Pride is why people can't agree. Have you ever seen people, the whole world, there's no agreement. Even their nations that are completely destroying themselves to nothing just because they cannot agree. You see there, live in harmony with each other. Don't be too proud. To enjoy the company of ordinary people. Wow. Enjoy each. I want our church. We should enjoy each other's company. Hallelujah. When people don't leave early on Sunday. Uh, after church service. People linger and they talk. And I love that. Enjoying each other's company. Company of ordinary people. And don't think you know it all. Don't think you know it all. See, Naaman, even in his pain, in his leprosy, he thinks he knows it better than the prophet. I mean, humble yourself. You don't know it. Let's come as if we don't know anything. Let's come to God. Let him speak to us. He probably will give us a direction that may be something that has never been done in the Bible. But if he's the one that says it, right? Let's do it. But in many cases, the things God is telling us is already in the Bible. We just don't want to do it. And I want us to break that spirit of pride in the name of Jesus. James chapter 4 verse 10, he says, Humble yourselves in the sight of of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. Huh? He will lift you up. James chapter 4, verse 10. He will lift you up if you humble yourself. Hebrews 11, verse 5. He who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. We are going to seek the Lord. So I am challenging you that during this time of fasting that we are having, that is coming. Strip yourself of all, all that you think you know. Come, in fact, we should come like this every Sunday, every time we come to God. Don't say, oh, I, I know that one. Or maybe I should have been like that, you know. You know, that mind, that analytical mind. Oh, that proud mind. We strip it off. Let's stand together. We're just going to believe the Lord.